I've got to cover a couple of things. One is that I will often use a simile and then an unrelated simile back to back. We're all gonna have to live with it. We're just gonna have to be okay with it. I've come to peace with it, you have to. Also, a lot of my poetry will indicate to you the unfortunate truth that even though I am fat, I have sex. I don't like it any more than you do. It's gross. We're all gonna have to get used to it, it's part of science. It happens faster than you can imagine. One night, when I was 16 years old, I went to sleep, and when I woke up, I was 37. <laughs> Wearing all the same clothes, but now they all say different things about me. And the most horrifying thing of all was to discover that I was not even ashamed of it. See, every year that I'm alive, I have the next year pinned in my head as the age of legitimacy. <laughs> but I will finally be able to stop apologizing for how many words I know. When my mother will be able to rest easy knowing that I am truly and at long last a lost cause. <laughs> I'll be spared the humiliation of constantly being overwhelmed that what I want will stop leaping out at me like a tiger from the tall grass, that what I feel will stop tromping in from the horizon like an invading soldier, all teeth and wild hair and foreign pheromones and shouting herds of words I've never heard. I thought I was through with all of that, and then there was you. And there was you and me, and you did nothing more powerful than take off your shirt. And in a hot, blind second, we went from being simple to complicated, and realized that the language that we had so furiously studied would not be the one actually spoken in this country. See, I'm just old enough now that everyone I know is a version of someone else I used to know. The same role with a different actor. And every feeling I have is a feeling already in progress from when that kind of thing happened to me before. And I don't so much do anything as try not to do what I did last time again. Or try to do it exactly the same. <laughs> try to describe you in the same cunning words that worked on the last girl. And kiss you at the same carefully chosen moment. Confident like the way you know that you can feel through your own house in the dark. And the only trouble is that none of that shit works on you. Because you're the one thing I thought I would never see. You are something new. I thought I was prepared that it'd be enough to understand the signals and the way you put together your outfits, the hidden codes and the color of your bra strap, the hieroglyphics and the folds and curves of your dime store jeans. But there was a world of unspeakable literature, a ruthless lexicon of touch and stretch marks and scents too sweet to stand and yanking urges like nylon thread through my ribcage. I don't know if you meant it, if you planned it, if you gave me this gift of trust, knowing that it would ransack me from the inside, but like the boys inside the walls of Troy, I was not ready, not nearly, for the true sound of your body opening wide, full of warriors and weapons, the delicate, brutal moment when the language of clothing is translated back into the language of skin. this all along? Did you lure me here to Eugene to finally do away with me? <laughs> Alexis, that poem was awesome. Yeah. It was awesome. <laughs> Thank you so much for getting up here and being honest and brave and what was it, what was it, mature and disgusting? That was an amazing combination of words. Um, this is my book. It's called The Diesel Powered Rag Doll, and it is only $10. It's full of poetry, for your convenience. Um, oh, and tonight, anyone who buys the book, I've already inserted them, also gets a free uh, collector's edition Buffy the Vampire Slayer playable trading card. So you don't have to die 
the book, you know which one you're going to get. They're all different. <laughs> Hello there, little worm. How did you get into my bed? I'm very surprised. This has never happened before. You have a lot of pretty colors. I never knew that worms even had colors. You must be very special. Don't be afraid, little worm. What happened? Did you get separated from your little worm family? Oh, you're single. Okay. Well, still, there's no reason for this to be awkward. I'm sure that most people would find it very gross to find a single worm in their bed, but I'm okay with it. I think I'm very open-minded. No, I didn't mean that you were gross. I just meant, you know, we're so different. We're in very different places in our lives. It's probably best for us to not be in the same bed, because I have a lot of things going on right now, and also you are covered in mucus. I'm not judging. I have a lot of mucus membranes myself. They're some of my favorite membranes. I just have so much going on. No, I don't mean to imply that you're shallow. I just have, uh, how do I put this? A certain evolutionary complexity that you may not be ready for. I I'm gonna have to ask you to leave. This has really been unexpected, but I have work in the morning, so I'm just going to carry you out to the flower bed. You really should not come back. It'll be best if you wait for me to get in touch with you. I like to have the place cleaned up for visitors, and if I rolled over in the middle of the night, it would really be horrible for both of us. <laughs> Worse for you. I know that you're not afraid. In fact, I kind of envy it, but I am. I'm very afraid. You're gonna have to respect that. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs>